Biotechnoterra celebrating 10 years as a publicly traded company by ringing the opening bell on the NASDAQ today. What's fascinating about the company is its evolution. It started as a women's health company to organ health and oncology today. Its most popular diagnostic test is called Signaterra. It's for patients who have previously been diagnosed with cancer and want to know if their cancer is about to come back, has come back. Signaterra is custom built for each individual using tissue from their own tumor. The blood test looks for circulating DNA of that tumor and, conduct, and can detect recurrence up to two years in advance of a scan. Natera's market cap currently stands at more than $21 billion. Since its 2015 IPO, the stock has spiked 621%. Joining us now live in studio is Natera CEO Steve Chapman. Ten years. Did you ever anticipate that it would come to the point where you could create something that actually predicted whether people would see a recurrence of cancer? Yeah, so we really focused on uh, trying to help as many patients as possible. We developed a technology that can detect extremely tiny quantities of DNA. And, you know, after becoming the market leader in prenatal testing, we, we thought cancer was a good application for the technology, just given the problem at hand and uh, the fact that we could help millions of uh, more patients. Millions of more patients. And when you talk about how many people have been helped by it. Give me an example of just exactly how it works in, in an example that is recent, that you know of, that you can describe. Because people are listening to this thinking, this thing is like a crystal ball. Yeah, so one of the biggest problems today with, with cancer is disease recurrence. So about 20 to 50% of patients will have disease recurrence over their lifetime or, or after they've been diagnosed with cancer. And so with Signaterra, we can look for little tiny fragments of uh, tumor DNA that are circulating in the bloodstream, and we can detect those sometimes up to two years in advance of imaging. One of the other use cases for the test is after the doctor's done everything they can to do surgery with curative intent, uh, remove the cancer from the body, we can use Signaterra to, at that point, determine whether there's any cancer left. So we're looking at minimal residual disease. And this is tissue-free, correct? Yeah, so there's two ways the tests uh, can be performed. One is the uh, Signaterra method where we sequence the exome or the genome or the tumor, and then we make a, a unique personalized test that's just for that patient's tumor. Um, there, we, just a simple blood draw after the test is made, we can look at minimal residual disease and disease recurrence. Now, we can also do a, a tissue-free assay. We uh, developed a test called uh, the latitude test, uh, which is non-tumor informed, uh, where you can also, just from a simple blood draw, look at the MRD status. This leads me to ask about cost. And I bring up cost because we just saw the big, beautiful bill turn into law. And there are cuts to Medicaid. There are cuts to uh, provider reimbursement, things like that. But there are also cuts to Medicare. There will be a $500 million cut immediately, I believe, to exactly what is happening. With, sorry, what? Billion. I'm sorry. Yeah, what are we talking? Millions. It's billions. $500 billion in cuts over 10 years to Medicare. Have you modeled? Are you prepared for that to affect your sales? Yeah, so we're not anticipating any, um, any changes to reimbursement at this point. You know, in fact, we've been expanding our reimbursement. Uh, we just got Medicare coverage for lung cancer, um, you know, in addition to some other cancers. I think on the Medicaid side, you know, we do see some changes to eligibility requirements, although Medicaid's a pretty small section of our business overall, largely on the prenatal side. And there, you know, a lot of patients, when they're pregnant, are exempt from some of the eligibility requirements. So, again, I think on, on either side, we're not really expecting much of an impact to our business. But a smart business would yeah. be looking 10 years down the road and saying, what is coming next? I mean, do you really think that you guys will skate through? I mean, it's a brilliant concept, but... At this point, we don't know what's going to be paid for and what's not. Yeah, I think the, the most important thing is really looking at clinically validating the tests and delivering you know, very good clinical information to uh, physicians and to patients. And a lot of times with diagnostics, we're looking at taking costs out of the system. So, of course, we do health economic models. We look at you know, we're using diagnostic tests to make decisions about uh, treatments and about therapies and about invasive procedures. A lot of those are very costly therapies, very costly invasive procedures. So we can replace some of those with uh, non-invasive, uh, more cost-effective diagnostic procedures 
um, you know, a lot of times that takes cost out of the system. On average, how much yeah. does Signatera cost for somebody who comes in and says, I need to know if my colon cancer is flaring up or going to come back? Yeah, right. So we're in network with a lot of the insurance companies. So what we do see is that the vast majority of patients don't actually have any out-of-pocket expenses. None. You know, if they do, in, in some cases, they have a copay. You know, maybe it could be a couple hundred dollars. Or if they haven't met their deductible, you know, maybe it could be a little bit more than that. But for the vast majority of patients, there's no out-of-pocket expense. I mean, obviously, over the past 10 years, you've expanded exponentially, but you're now seeing year-over-year -year growth of 57%. Very impressive. You're cash flow positive, but you're not profitable. When do you anticipate, because you've been a public company for quite some time now, when do you anticipate that you will start being able to see some profits. Yeah, so we're investing heavily now into the future of the business with new clinical trials, new research and development. And you know, because of that, we're not profitable. We are cash flow positive. Now, we haven't really given a specific timeline to getting uh, profitable overall as a company, but I think it's inevitable when you look at the top line revenue growth that we're delivering, uh, when you look at the gross margin improvement that we're seeing, when you look at the scale that we're getting in the business, and just the overall opportunity and size of the market, um, you know, I think there's, it's, it's inevitable that there's a path to profitability. There. Can I go back to what you said about eligibility? If yep. Medicaid, they're going to start questioning eligibility, who wouldn't be eligible for this? I'm assuming you have to have had cancer to get Signatero, which predicts if you're going to get the relapse, but who would they say no to? Yeah, so in Signatero, we're largely dealing with the sort of Medicare population or in some cases in the private population. So there, you know, there's specific restrictions on, you know, who's been diagnosed with cancer, what type of cancer. And we have to go cancer by cancer by cancer and try to get coverage. And so we've done extensive validations. When you look at, uh, you know, pan cancer, immunotherapy monitoring, colorectal cancer, ovarian, breast, each of those we've done very extensive clinical trials, submitted those to Medicare and gotten approval and then taken those to private payers as well. What's your next big thing beyond Signatera? Yeah, so uh, look, we're, we're in very large unpenetrated markets today. So our like goal, what? well, I think in you know, women's health today, you know, there's still a lot of opportunities ahead of us. In organ health and oncology, we're in mid single digit penetration. So if we just keep doing what we're doing, we're gonna see extensive top line revenue growth uh, you know, we're going to see lots of volume growth, and we're going to be able to help a lot more patients. I saw that you have done a lot of research early in your career at UCLA and in San Francisco. You must be despondent about the cuts to science and research, because had that been you today, you might not get funding anymore. What would you say to President Trump and to Doge if it's, if it's even still doing what it's doing? I mean, there were so many cuts to science and research. What would you say to them? So I think we, we really support the, the idea that, you know, it's important to focus on wellness and focus on overall health. And a lot of the tests that we, you know, we're making and we're working on in the future are, are looking at improving wellness, improving health. Yeah, but even so, those were cut. Oh, well, you know, I, I do think we, one of the things we've been doing, though, is stepping in and, and sort of funding some of the research. So like I said, this year we're going to be doing about $500 million in R&D. Um, and a lot of times we're meeting with academic centers. We're funding our own clinical trials uh, because we think this is important and you know, we want to continue to move the science forward. So, you know, whereas, you know, traditionally some things might have been focused or funded by academic centers or, you know, maybe from NIH, you know, today we're, we're, we are funding some of that ourselves. I am fascinated by this as a doctor's daughter myself. <laughs> My dad did a lot of work in research when it came to prostate cancer and good, good work on behalf of what you guys are doing. Thank you so much for joining us.